Hey y'all, Ashley Monet here. This is such a weird angle. I'm on top of my chair that I normally do my intros on, but I wanted to get high enough so I could show you guys and I'm still not high enough, so I don't know why I did this, but my clock for my intro wall needs a replacement. It's fine as far as clocks go. I just feel like it could use some more flavor. I'll put this one somewhere else. Okay, let's get back down to a normal level. Okay, so I kind of teased what I wanted to do with my clock. In my last episode of Create This Book, I'm excited for this because this is not only my first dollar store makeover, but it is my first project on this channel where I'm working in 3D, which is not a strength of mine. Anyways, if you are versed in the YouTube art community, you probably know Sarah Renee Clark. Anyway, she has this awesome clock on her background and I watched a video of hers. I don't remember which one it was, but somebody had actually asked about the clock and where to get one. Long story short, she got it out of the country, I think in like Italy, a little specialty shop. So basically you can't get them. A quick Amazon search yielded plenty of results of clocks that are fairly similar if you like the melted clock aesthetic. Super affordable too. However, I look at it and I think it's just not drippy enough. Now, if I have the power to make a clock exactly as I want it to be, why not do it? So I have a clock. This was actually from their like premium section. So I think it ended up either being three or $5. And we have some air dry clay. Can I pull this off? We will find out. Let's jump right in and see what I can make of it. Okay, so presumably the first step here is gonna be to take this clock apart and see what I'm working with. Unscrew it. In a perfect world, I'd love to just have the flat clock base and no like ledges around it, if that makes sense. Let's pull off this rim and remove the glass. And of course, there's still a significant ledge around the base here. I feel like I'm gonna have to cut it somehow. It's not super thick, it's actually pretty flimsy, but it is very raised, so that's a bit of distance to cut through. I opted to just use my X-Acto, but pair it with heat. I happen to have a torch, but I do think a simple lighter would have worked fine too. It was really effective, like two or three times heating the blade and then cutting and I made it right through. But rather than put in the work to cut off the entire rim, I decided just to focus on top and bottom since those were where the drips were gonna be. Once I had cut down the sides, the base was honestly thin enough I was able to just cut right through it without the added heat. Good old dollar store craftsmanship. <laughs> Okay, so now my base is prepped. It's time to get out my tools and get to the clay. This is the Sculpey air dry clay. I hadn't heard anything about it, good or bad, so I was going into this pretty blind. Also, have I mentioned I'm not good with clay in general? I just want to reiterate that. Keep that in your mind. Keep your expectations nice and low here. <laughs> I started just slapping clay all over the bottom, basically trying to extend that base to where I want it. Did I have a system, a plan, a basic strategy at all? Nay, nay. It puts the clay on the clock and smooths it until it looks not bad. That was the strategy. I cut in that drip shape I was going for and then created a little clay snake so I could start building up that rim again. It would have been smart to score and slip this before attaching it. That is the way it is meant to be done. I did not do that. However, I will say this didn't result in any noticeable consequences later in the project. So can't say I worked smarter, but I definitely didn't work harder. <laughs> now for the second piece, I did score it lazily, I might add. And now I attempted to form the top. This is where I want the clock to have that bend so it sits atop my shelf, much like the Inspiration Dolly painting. Whoa, quite a jump in time there. Uh, to blend it all, I added a little bit of clay over those existing rim ledges. Now let me say loud and clear before anyone jumps into the comments, because I know you guys will. I am fully aware that this entire makeover would have been a thousand times easier if I had fully disassembled the clock beforehand. The little hands just proved to be in my way all the time. It was very annoying. However, I don't pretend to know a darn thing about clocks. If I did somehow manage to take the whole thing apart, I know for sure I would not be able to get it back together and have it function. So I just worked around it all. I did a last little bit of trimming and smoothing, but then I felt it still wasn't quite drippy enough. I mean, that's the whole reason I'm doing this is for the drips. <laughs> So I rolled out three little drips and attached them to where I felt they worked best. 
With that, I truly felt like this sculpting was as good as I could get it by myself. I had a plan to rely heavily on sanding once it was dry to get it to look smoother. Little did I know that would not be happening. A little foreshadowing there. But in the meantime, I took advantage of the gorgeous weather we've been having and set it out on my patio to dry. I figured warm temperatures, direct sunlight. I assumed it would dry overnight. <laughs> Anyways, the long drying time was what had me feeling like I was not going to be able to get this video out in time. So once it was finally dry, I definitely kicked it into high gear. I started out with my attempt at sanding. Either this clay is practically concrete when it dries or my 180 grit was just not aggressive enough because it made zero difference to the texture. Good to know for the future. Sanding will not save you. And now for function. Oh, hi, Phoebe. She's Spider-Man. <laughs> So stinking cute. Ah. Anyways, for function, I plan to drill a hole into the folded over portion of the clock so it can hang on a screw that I'll put into the shelf. Okay, that's good. Now I can finally work on painting my lovely little clock. I used my little drawing that was in my last Create This Book episode as reference, but I started making the hands white and then gave the entire face of the clock a coat of gesso to prep it. You can see the numbers are printed on a type of poster board that I was unable to remove at the start of this project. It was glued down so well. But of course, with the paint, it immediately started to ripple. <laughs> it did settle as it dried, though, so don't panic. I started in with the gold for the clock rim. I love this paint. It's the Folklore Metallic Acrylic in pure gold. First coat, sure, a little streaky, but that second coat, and it is just chef's kiss. So shiny. And now to paint the face, my glorious black. A simple two coats of that and it was good to go. No drama. Now to add my time markers, I chose to use Roman numerals. And of course went white because nothing would contrast the black more than, um, well, white. <laughs> now it occurs to me that there are no juicy highlights in this project, but I'm using my juicy highlight pen for these. So... <laughs> And with that, it is finished. Now why spend 15 bucks on a clock that is pretty much what you're looking for when you could spend almost that much in materials, devote hours of work and days of dry time to get a much drippier, much more homemade looking clock instead. <laughs> All kidding aside though, I actually do like it. Here's my clock in the space compared to my old clock in that setup, what it used to look like. I definitely like it better and that was the whole goal. So mission accomplished as far as I'm concerned. And look, it works and everything. I'm glad I pulled off this project and the video. I like the clock. I hope you do too. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye.